So last time we left off with this guy. This is a DC motor that I have taken apart and cut away everything that wasn't necessary so that you could see its inner components. We described how the DC motor works. If you haven't seen that video, it's gonna be really important that you watch that first. I'm gonna put a link right here. You can click on that and watch that video and then come back because we're gonna be building upon the information I showed you in that video. Well, what about DC generators and what do they have to do with motors? Well, it turns out that this is already a DC generator. In the first video, when I waved a magnet over the wire, you saw that current was flowing through the wire. And the same the other way around, when you run current through the wire, it becomes an electromagnet. Well, the same thing would be true here. Uh, these wires are connected to the commutator. And if I spin this shaft mechanically, like with my hand, or if I put a crank here, or even if I put another motor here and spent this shaft, then what would happen is the magnetic field, as the wires go by, this magnetic field will induce current flow in these wires and they will flow through the commutator. So in this case, spinning the shaft would actually charge this battery. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. Okay, so I've got this. I've made this little coupling real quick just so that I could spin the shaft uh, mechanically with my drill. And then we're going to measure voltage. I've got this set to DC volts. And let's see what kind of potential charge we might have. First, you can see just by me spinning the shaft, I get a very low voltage. It's in millivolts. If I spin the shaft the other way, you can see the the voltage is positive. So right now we're getting a negative 0.23 volts. If I spin the other way, point 0.5. And let's spin it up and see. Well, that was 1.9 volts. Let's see what happens if we add two more magnets. All right, almost two and a half volts. So now we can see that the amount of voltage we can get out of this is related to, is proportional to the magnetic field. And it's also proportional to the velocity. As you saw earlier, that varying the speed will vary the voltage that you can get out. That's going back to that relative motion. The more relative motion there is, uh, the greater the induced current. And now I have my slightly larger DC motor, which is completely unmodified, except I removed the flywheel. And now uh, we'll try to do the same thing. Wow, look at that. It's a much higher voltage. Now, what do you think the difference is between this and that? So it's not the size of the motor, it's actually the size of the magnetic field. See that motor used to have these two magnets, uh, both the North and the South Pole, much larger magnets surrounding the wire. And in this case, I've got even larger magnets now surrounding the wire. And you can see that the voltage produced is much higher. I'm gonna switch the direction so that we get a positive voltage. You look at that and you see I can get about 48 volts. So if I spin this guy up to his rated speed of 4,800 RPM, uh, I would get about 130 volts out of this motor. So that would be 130 volts in DC. If you wanted to 
power some household appliances here in the US, uh, typically it'd be 120 volts, then you're gonna need to invert that to AC, alternating current. And we'll talk more about AC uh, in the next video. Well, now you have an idea of the DC motor and the DC generator. What makes a universal motor universal is the fact that it will run on both AC, that is alternating current, which you get from the wall. Uh, in the US, that's typically 120 volts. And DC, or direct current, like what you get from a battery. Now, the reason that a universal motor can run on AC is because you can see here, the stator field is actually an electromagnet. It's got two coils of wire, just like what you see on the rotor here. And here's one that I've already taken apart. We've got many of the same characteristics, right? We've got the commutator, the coil windings here on the rotor. And then also in the stator, the part that's stationary, you can see more coils of wire. But in the DC motor, the permanent magnet DC motor, we saw uh, two very large permanent magnets. Because these magnets are fixed, they, their polarity doesn't switch. The north is always north, the south is always south. You can only drive a DC motor with direct current. I want to be careful though when I say that the DC motor runs on direct current because it's actually just using direct current to get alternating current uh, at the rotor. Now I've already shown you this concept, I just didn't explain it this way. So let me try to see if I can, uh, if I can help you here. You've got the brushes uh, touching the commutator like this, right? So here you can see the two brushes pressing against the commutator. And we've got positive on one end and negative on one end, and so the current is flowing in one direction. And it depends on whether you want to use conventional current or not, we're not going to get into all that. But we're just going to say that the current is flowing from the battery in one direction. And as this guy rotates, if you can imagine that uh, one side is positive and the other side is negative, once you make a half revolution and you're touching the other side, now that side that was positive is now touching the negative and vice versa. And therefore the current is flowing the other direction and the magnetic field has flipped. The south pole is now a north pole. Okay, so now you know DC motors actually run on AC current internally and the commutator is like a mechanical inverter switching the, the polarity of the direction uh, current flow and also flipping the polarity of the magnet. One more thing I want to tell you about the universal motor. This would not make a very practical generator. And the reason for this is very simple. The stator fields are not magnetic. You have to supply electricity in order to make the stator field an electromagnet. And remember, there are three things you need to get this system to work, right? You need the relative motion, which will be supplied by your mechanical crank or whatever you're using. It could be a big paddle wheel inside of a waterfall. It could be whatever, a windmill. You have your mechanical energy, but you don't have your uh, electricity flowing through the stator in order to get your permanent magnet. One option, which I don't know that it's all that practical, but I'm going to bring it up, is uh, perhaps to supply a very small DC current through the ro uh, stator. And then with a very high velocity here on the rotor, you could potentially get uh, enough uh, supply voltage out of this guy in order to run some devices or in order to charge something up. But again, this would not be the ideal generator for home use, which is the context that I have in mind here. Uh, primarily because you actually need electricity in order to make this a generator. With the permanent magnet DC motor, rotating the rotor is all you need. You just need that mechanical input in order to get electricity out of it. Now, there are some free energy folks out there who try to do permanent magnets with permanent magnets, and we're not even going to talk about that. Um, it's not worth discussing. That doesn't work. What you need is a permanent magnet a conductor, which we've discussed, and you need relative motion. All right, this series is going pretty well, and we've got a couple more things we need to cover. Um, first, I want to teach you about induction, which we'll do in the next video, and that's what this demonstration is for. And then also, I want to answer all of your burning questions. I've got a lot of great questions in the comment section, so I plan to address those 
in the final video. If you will scroll down, leave me a comment, let me know what your question is. Uh, I may answer it in the last video. Here I'm going to put a couple of links on the screen. The one on this side is going to be the playlist for this whole series so that you can watch them in order. Down here on this side is the subscribe button if you want to follow my channel. Until then, thanks for watching.